Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today, once again, we are looking at fractions. We're in Unit 3, Lesson 6, in our home links, Solving Fraction Comparison Number Stories. Let's take a look at the first number story, and uh, before we begin, we're going to utilize the ruckus strategy to help frame our thinking. Ruckus, of course, is to read and then reread a number story problem, underline the question, circle important information, come up with an action plan, and then solve. So let's do it. Tanisha and Krista were each reading the same book. Tanisha said she was three-fourths of the way done with it, and Krista said she was six-eighths of the way finished. Who has read more, or have they read the same amount, and how do you know? So first we have to figure out what we need to figure out. So let's reread. And as I reread, I'm going to uh, underline the question and circle important information. Tanisha and Krista were reading the same book. Tanisha said she was three-fourths of the way done. And Krista said she was six-eighths of the way done. Finished. Who has read more? Or have they read the same amount? So, what we need to do now is come up with an action plan. And our action plan has us comparing two fractions. Three-fourths and six-eighths. Now, these two fractions have unlike denominators. Unlike denominators mean they are not alike. Okay, But when I look at these two denominators, I quickly realize that 4 is a factor of 8, because 8 is a multiple of 4. Okay, So what does that mean? Well, that means I can multiply 4 times something to get 8, which means I can convert fourths into eighths. Okay, now you and I both know that 4 times 2 is 8. So in order for me to figure out an equivalent fraction, all I would have to do is multiply the numerator in the same way that I multiply the denominator, and that gives me an equivalent fraction. So what's 3 times 2? Don't everybody say it together. 6. 6 eighths. But wait a minute. That's the same fraction here. So... By multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 2 to make the denominator the same as the other fraction, I have proven that 3 fourths is the same as 6 eighths. So let's go back to my question. Who has read more or have they read the same amount? Okay, so the answer to that first question is they read the same. Now, how do we know? Okay, How do we know? Well, we know that 3 fourths is equivalent to 6 eighths because... See, saying that something's true is one part of the answer. Being able to prove that is true, that's another. So why are they equivalent? Well, we could justify that they are equivalent because 8 is a multiple of 4, and when you convert 3 fourths into eighths, it turns out that they are the same amount. So let's say that. So it is a multiple of 4, and when you convert 3 fourths into eighths, They are the same. You have to 
pardon my chicken scratch, in different size and thicknesses of my writing. I am using a stylus on my iPad, helping create this video, and sometimes it's a little wonky. So, so anyways, that's how we prove that they read the same amount. We have to compare the fractions, and when we compare fractions, we have to look at numerators and denominators. If I have different denominators, then that means I have to make one of the fractions equivalent to the other so I can compare. If I take a look at problem two, on the other hand, I have two fractions that have different denominators, but they have the same numerators. Heather and Jerry each bought an ice cream bar, although the bars were the same size. They were different flavors. Heather ate five eight of her ice cream bar and Jerry ate five tenths of his. Who ate more or did they eat the same amount? So again, using ruckus, I'm going to underline the question. Who ate more or did they eat the same amount? And I go back and I think about some of the facts in the question. Heather ate five eighths of her ice cream bar, Jerry ate five tenths. Okay. Um, Heather and Jerry have the same numerators, five, but they have different denominators, meaning that they split their ice cream bars into different numbers of pieces. Okay, so five eighths versus five tenths. And the way we can easily compare those two amounts is by creating a little model. So I'm going to create a rectangle here and a rectangle here. And then I'm going to cut them up into parts. Okay, So 5 eighths, I could cut it up in half, in fourths, and then cut it again to make eighths. For 5 tenths, I would do the same thing. I would cut it into 5 slices, and cut it across again to make tenths. And then I shade some in. So. This would be 5 eighths. This would be 5 tenths. I can make sure all my line segments are complete, otherwise it won't fill. Okay, so as I compare 5 eighths to 5 tenths, you can see that 5 eighths is a little bit more of that ice cream bar because it starts into that second row, whereas 5 tenths is clearly just that first row. Now, I don't think anybody would really eat an uh, ice cream bar from this direction, but you get the drift. So when I go about to compare these two fractions, I can see that 5 eighths is larger than five tenths because uh, there's more parts to it, or you get more of the of the total amount. Okay, so the question is, who ate more, Heather or Jerry? Well, Heather ate five eighths, so Heather is the one that ate more. Write a number sentence to show this. Well, we just did that over here. This. Is a number sentence right there, so but I'll rewrite it in the space here. So I would write the fraction 5 eighths is greater than 5 tenths. And that's how you go about creating a number sentence that shows an inequality. Okay, why don't you try the rest of these problems on your own, friends. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to your math teachers. Otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thanks.